Okay, good morning. We are going to sit and do this cat, which is inspired by Paul Klee's cat, bird, cat and Bird on Canvas. Now, if you don't know who Paul Klee is, he was a Swiss artist who was born in 1879 and passed away in 1940. And he was really into color theory and like what happens when you put colors next to each other and what they do. So we're going to talk a little bit about color theory today as we do this cat. And um, also we can see by his work, well this is not his work, this is my work, but his work is inspired by expressionism and cubism and some surrealism. And um, it really shows you that who you hang out with that does have an effect on you because his, his one of his friends was a man named Kandinsky who is also a famous artist in his own right. And they both taught at a place, a school of architecture and art called the Bauhaus in Germany. So we're going to get started. What you're going to need today is some construction paper. I've chosen black um, because I'm going to be using these things called construction paper crayons. And you can get these online at walmart.com. Um, you can sometimes find them in different places. I'm not sure if you'll find them at the dollar store, but these are Crayola brand, and I know Sargent also makes a brand. Um, but they're comparable in price to regular crayons. But they do have something that regular crayons don't have, which is that they are smooth and they blend really well, and they uh, work really good on construction paper. That's why they were made, so they would show up just a little bit better for art purposes. So I've got a, a whole selection of colors. I also have gotten this box of regular crayons. This is something that I uh, we use at school. Um, it's one of our box sets that we get in a classroom pack, but it just has all the different colors that you might use. Okay, and you can use both, but for the majority of it, I will be using the construction paper crayons. And as you can tell, they have a dark wrapper and the regular crowns, they have sort of a colored wrapper. So you can, if you're throwing them all on a bin, you can see which one is which, okay? All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is make an outline. Gonna make an outline, sort of a rounded off rectangle, and that's gonna be kind of our frame, if you will. And I picked a color that was a little bit dark. We might need to go over that. Let me go over this with this light crayon so maybe you can see it better. I started with blue. Instead of drawing with black, which is a lot of times what we would do, we're gonna start with blue. Now this shows up much better. Okay, so you have a uh, Rectangle, sort of round it off. I got a little bit sharp there, so I'm gonna round that guy off a little bit. And this one too. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, you don't really want it to be perfect. You want it to be sort of playful. All right, so the first step in our making this cat, Paul Klee's cat and bird image. Let's see if I can set this over here. Okay, um, is mapping out where our blocks are going to be. So we're first gonna start with the head of the cat. And how I've done this is I come over about, oh, I don't know, maybe one finger space on either side, and I'm just gonna make a, a little dot. About the same spot. That's gonna be the point of our ears. And then we're going to kind of bring our fingers in and we're going to put a little dot right here. Okay, then maybe two, two knuckles down, we're going to make a heart. And this is going to be the nose of our cat. And so what we're going to do, as Paul Klee liked to do, is have continuous line. So now that we've had our points of reference, our three dots and our heart, we are going to draw a continuous line from the bottom of our heart up to this using the circle to make the side of a cat's face. So watch what we do here. Don't be afraid to go big. And then this one kind of flattens out here and goes straight up to that point. Okay. 
And then we're going to bring our line down there and our line up there. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do the same line from here all the way up to our cat ear. So now we have our cat face. And we're going to do a little line here for the nose bridge. And this is one thing about his cat picture that I really like is the eyes extend the whole side of the face. So we're going to do sort of a half circle. And then on the bottom, we're going to do another half circle. Our cat's going to have really big eyes. And at this point, I'm pressing a little hard to kind of get, make sure I get a really good application on that. And then we're going to have our cat eye in the middle like this, and a little mouth down there. And the other thing we need to do is whiskers. So we're gonna bring our whisker off. You can make it extend all the way to the end there if you want. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now we have our cat face. Now, the other thing that Paul Klee did, and I'll show you this picture, this is my picture, but he put a bird sitting on the top of the cat's head. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our bird. If you look at this, let's look at the shape of this. We have sort of a triangle or diamond made in this spot above the eyes. And then we have this sort of fish shape. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I'm going to show you how to do the bird next. So we are going to first, I think it's easier to sort of lay out that diamond shape first, like that, and then come over here a little bit and let's make our bottom of our bird. And then we're going to make the top of our bird only now we're going to go ahead and extend that line all the way down and this line has a triangle that comes down there like this okay so it's sort of like a fish shape it's hard to make a fish shape balanced on this diamond piece I mean you could make a fish shape like this but it's hard to get it placed right when you have that triangle in the mix. Okay, so I just did this part first, and then I extended my lines to create that little bird tail. And these are going to be already like his feet, and then we're gonna add a little pointed teardrop there and put a little dot for the eye. And now we have our drawing mapped out. Okay, so I started with blue for the drawing part, um, and now we're going to do the coloring. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white, and I'm going to do a light layer. Now with this particular part, I'm not pressing super hard. I'm going to just lay a little mask of crayon down, if you will, to create a lighter space here. And as you can tell, I'm not pushing as hard as I did with the blue because what I'm trying to do is create just a little layer to float another color on top of for this part. The rest of it will be pretty, coloring pretty forcefully. But this part, I just like to get a little bit of a help making the eyes really pop by laying down a thin layer of white construction paper crayon underneath. And I'm staying sort of in my little section right now. Other parts of this drawing, we will be going out of a little bit more wild coloring. Okay, so let's do our other side. Now, it's worth saying that um, different colors will have a different effect. And so if you use a different color construction paper, your results are going to vary. Um, the varied results, results are beautiful, though, so you never know. I'm going to even this out just a little bit, and I might even 
lay it a little thicker on the bottom part of the eye because if you look at an eye, up under the eyelid is where it gets actually darker. So I might put a little bit heavier application just for visual interest on the bottom of the eye. So as you can see, it softly grades to lighter and lighter. Okay, so now we have our eyes in. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and do this part first and then we'll move on to the rest of the picture, but I'm gonna go ahead and color those eyes in with this bright yellow. And that's gonna make our cat eyes look like they're almost glowing in the dark. Check that out, isn't that cool? Yeah, I've not used construction paper crayons that often. And I'm gonna tell you, I didn't really, at some points, find that they were worth uh, bothering with. But um, just for drawing, they're really good. And I really, really have enjoyed using them. And I hope that you'll actually look for them and get some because I'm going to tell you what, they're fairly cheap and you can really get a lot of bang for your buck if you just spend a little time playing around with them. You might be surprised. Look how it almost glows in the dark. Even just like this, this picture is so really cool. And just fill in your eyes. And I also want to say, if you don't want to do Paul Klee's cat, why don't you do your own cat? I have two cats, Max and Noki. And I might have to try to do a picture of Max and Noki this way. Although my cats are not as colorful. My one Noki is black and white, and Max is a silver and black and white cat. He's a very handsome boy. All right, so we've got our eyes. Ooh, popping off the page. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is just start laying in some color. We'll start with our bird at the top, and we're going to put some, um, this pink in there. Our bird body is going to be pink. And you can start to press hard if you want. And you, it's okay to leave some little spaces if you like the little black peeking through. That looks kind of neat to do that. Okay, so we got our bird. And then on the, on the head, I'm going to do... I'm going to do this color, but I am going to come back and I'm going to put white on top of it to make it different from the eyeball. So I'm going to do kind of mix it a little, put a little white. And then come back in with the blue. And I actually might change that eye color. Now I'm gonna press really hard to really pump that lightness out. And then come back in with a dark color because I went over that. I made an artistic decision. <laughs> All right, so there's our bird. And then maybe we wanna do pink here. so that we can tell that this is the bird's legs. And then maybe some other color on the inside, maybe purple. Let's do some purple in there. Looks kind of dynamic next to that yellow, doesn't it? Nice, okay. Now, let's do a little bit of this yellow color, it's sort of a very warm yellow. I'm going to go ahead and peel, don't hate me moms, peel a little of this off because I've used it quite a bit and so it's kind of come down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and I'm not going to throw this paper down 
I am going to take it and put it right in the trash can. That's important. All right. So let's lay in. Let's just get a little random laying in of some of this uh, warmish yellow color. And I am famous for breaking crowns. I probably will break crowns. I just did. See, I knew what was going to happen. Okay. I love broken crowns, though. A lot of people don't like broken crayons, but I will use crayons. I'm going to turn my paper a little bit when I work. I hope that doesn't drive everybody crazy. I'm going to lay in some of these cat colors. I want to be careful about using too much yellow right next to his face. We might need to change the color. And then, you know, some cats, they have like this sort of calico spottiness going on. Let's see here. Maybe. Oh, you know what I realized? We forgot the neck. We had a, I forgot to put the neck in. Shame on me. Okay, so we he has to have a neck down here. So we need to put this line, this line. Now that looks right. Now we can see his face better. All right, and then I'm going to put these areas here to be a little bit orangish yellow. Just going to lay that down. I'm probably going to end up coming in and changing it a little bit. But that's the thing about art that a lot of people, I think, misunderstand is that it's about a lot of little decisions that you make as an artist where to put colors and how hard to push and when to stop and when to keep going. I find a lot of students um, fill a space with color and think they're finished. But when you're an artist, you, you're always asking yourself, is this complete? Is it the best that it could be? Or can I do something else to visually make it more exciting? And so good artists will always keep asking themselves, the questions that encourage them to keep going with their artwork. And we're not coloring this like a normal coloring where you pick one spot and then you just fill it all in. This is just sort of a lot like painting where you're coming up with new ways of looking at things. And some of his work, Paul Klee's work, is you, it's a little bit different. Like he comes off the side of his cat with some of his spots just for areas of visual interest. Okay. I'm just sort of looking at him. I think maybe here, a little bit here. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch to, there's some construction going on near my house today, so there's some rattling. I don't know what's happening. All right, I'm not sure what they're working on. I'm gonna come in here and take this orange color and we're going to blend it into this yellowish color. And you see how intense this is, this blue and this orange right next to each other. And then we're going to kind of blend over into that yellowish color. See how nice that transitions? Okay, and then maybe a little here. Every time I do this picture, it's a little different, and I kind of like exploring some different different ways to do things. Maybe we might put a little up here on top. Maybe a little down here next to his whisker. We'll probably will end up changing that just a little bit. And I'm going to do some in the nose. The 
go on it with this. You're just going to make decisions. Do I like it? Do I not like it? What can I do to change it if I don't like it? And Paul Klee, he really enjoyed color theory a lot. So he, he did a lot of playing around with what colors looked good next to each other, which is what we call color theory. And on the color wheel, the colors that are across from each other um, on the color wheel are the most dynamic next to one another. So it's always good to think about what colors look the most vibrant next to each other when you're making your decisions about art and what color paper you're working on too it does play a role in that. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little areas of white here where his little whisker places. Maybe some white up here by his ear. Hmm, didn't do that very smooth. Okay, and then, I'm sorry, I keep turning my work. I have, um, I always turn my work when I work on it. Probably not the greatest for filming. I'm not making you all dizzy. I'm gonna try. Try to leave it. Still. Love it! Okay. Let's see, what else should we do? Maybe put a little of that white here. And as I always say, you know, your work is gonna be different than my work. And that is exactly the way we want it. I like to see other people's interpretation of a particular picture. All right, I'm gonna pick up my light pink and I'm gonna hit right in here where the nose comes together. Blend it right into that yellow and the white here. Oh, that's fun. I really like how these crayons blend. I think from now on I might switch to construction paper crayons. <laughs> Now on white paper, it may be a little bit different situation, but on this darker paper, it sure looks good to me. I see a little spot in here that I need to fix right by his nose. There's a, a break in the line and I didn't like it. Okay, now let's get some dark pink or this, it's supposed to be sort of like a red, but it actually looks like hot pink. We're going to fill that nose in really good. Nice. I like it. Okay, down here on his mouth, I'm going to make, uh, just do a little bit of this pink here. And visually, you'll see that it balances the work to have three spots of color. But I might do a different thing. At the top part. I might even put white first and blend it into that pink. And then I might actually put a little bit of green on the white right here. The reason is that red, which is the same color family as pink, and green are opposite on the color wheel. Okay? Now I'm going to come back with my 
deeper orange and I'm gonna land some layers on top of this to really pop this color. We don't want too much yellow, straight yellow down there at the bottom. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, you can stop the video until you catch up, okay? Don't worry, you can always stop these videos when I'm doing them and catch up. But I try to keep them pretty going pretty well because some people work faster than other people. And sometimes, I don't know, the videos get a little bit boring um, unless you're super into it, you know. I don't want it to be boring. I want you to have fun still. Okay, we're getting there. Getting there, we're getting there. I might come in here and do just a little bit of that warmer orangey color there coming out. Maybe a little bit here. And for people who are super de duper symmetrical, they may not like work like this because it's a little bit different the way the colors go. Um, now I'm going to take brown, this brown color, and let's just put a little in here and blend those two colors together. It's kind of nice next to that. Very cool. Maybe a little over here. These have to be the decisions that you make in your work. Some things only you can decide. I don't want to use a whole lot of brown here, but I'm using it to create other hues by layering. So first starting with this sort of brown and then maybe coming in with an orange on top. I'm going to have to open this crayon too. Peel that again. And then I'm going to take this paper and put it right into the trash. I'm not leaving it on the floor for my mom to pick up. Because guess what? In this house, I am the mom. <laughs> See how we did? We created that little extra area. And we may come in here and do this from here. Just to pop that color just a little bit. I think the reason I turn my paper so much is because I'm short <laughs> and I can't always reach uh, the places that I want to reach. Oh, this is getting, getting good. It's getting good. Let's go back in with our sort of medium color. Get some of these spaces filled. this color and hit just a few spots with some intense yellow to bring our eye 
around our picture. Drawing this picture of this cat reminds me of a cat that I had, whose name was also Max many years ago. I'm sure he's living happily somewhere up north because I moved from up north and I had to leave him with a friend when I moved to southern Indiana a while back. Um, but his name was Max, and he was a rescue cat that we took in. And... He was really cute. We thought when we got him that he was going to be an inside cat. However, he had other ideas about that. <laughs> so we had to let him out at night and um, he was so cute. He actually made friends in the neighborhood. My friend lived close to me. We had a big house. It was like a house from like the 1800s, really beautiful old house. And we all had apartments in this house so that was sectioned off into apartments and it was really cool and my friend lived next door in the downstairs section department in this big old beautiful house on an old street and um <laughs> max max my cat would go outside because he wanted to get out and we wanted him to stay in but he just wouldn't have it and it ended up basically that we had to let him be an outside cat before it was all over with. But my friend's cat, Momo, and his little sister cat named Alice would come over and scratch at the door and meow, wanting Max to come out and play. And it was so cute. It was like little kids saying, can Max come out and play? It's hilarious. And so I'd open the door and Max would go out with Momo and Alice and he would run the streets and we found out that one of the other neighbors down the way from us was putting out food for the stray cats on his porch and so the cats would go out and run the streets and play around and then they'd go to his porch and eat and then take a little cat nap on his veranda and so it was <laughs> really funny we found that out. And the other thing about Max that was interesting, the reason why I stopped being worried about him is because I watched him one day and he, as a cat, he was so smart. Um, he actually looked both ways before he crossed the street every single time. He was really smart and he always looked out and all the other cats knew he was smart and so they would follow him and he would lead them across the street when it was safe and they would go on their way and have their little play day. Anyway, he was a smart cat, and he's a good boy. This is ending up having a lot of yellow, but I'm probably going to change a little bit of that. I'm just trying to get a basic layer of color on the majority of this so that we can work with it. Now I'm going to come in here with a little green above this bird just to kind of show it off a little bit and blend it into those colors. You wouldn't think... That, that would work but it sure does with these construction paper crowns they just they're magical gotta be careful of those little um, nerdlies on your paper because they will start to stick to places okay and I don't know if I want to put maybe some green here Still bothering me right there a little bit. Okay, it's coming together, coming together. I may end up going a little green over here too. And I will probably bring some darker green into it as well here in a minute nice I like it okay let's do let's do some green here it's 
because we have green here, 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 and here. So we want to balance our picture by sort of scattering out the little hints of those colors. That's what makes our work look really interesting. And I am what we refer to in the art business as a fauve, a wild beast of color. I just love color. Now, my clothes are another story. I mean, a lot of times I wear black and darker colors and jewel tones, but when it comes to art, love color. Makes me happy to see all the bright colors. Nice. Okay, maybe a little light here. I'm really looking at lights and darks, making sure that I have value range between light and darks of all the colors, and it really creates a sort of almost like a uh, it moves your eyes around the paper like music moves your body. Lights and darks make your eye want to look around at all the different places in the work. I'm mostly done with this, but I want to go ahead and put in some areas using my regular crayon to create some darks, some even darker values, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead with this dark, let's see what this color is. This is called Red Violet Crayola. And I'm going to lay in some values right next to these blue lines. And sort of blend upward. Just to give some depth to our bird. See how that pops even more now? Might do it on his tail too, not too much because it's a small space. And maybe here at the heart, right on that edge. And then maybe down here on his mouth. And just sort of blend in circles. Really light. We don't want to change it too much. Now, going to do, I'm going to try to find my dark, a dark orange color. This might be too brown, I don't know. Let's see. This is called Bittersweet Agridulce, I guess is what they call it. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, I'm not sure if I like that. Let's do a little since I already did it. It pops it a little bit. But I'm not sure how I feel about it. Well, I guess it does work. And this is how I do art. I'm like, huh, will this work? No. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> so a lot of the way I do things is testing out my ideas. Sometimes I don't like them at first, and then when I look at it, I think, oh, that doesn't look bad. I wonder if you do that when you make your artwork. And so now um, we're just taking regular crayon and just finishing up our work by making it a little bit better. And Blending colors, getting lights and darks in there as best that we can. Trying to make the intensity of this work um, really pop out. And at the top, I am going to take a sort of darker yellow. This is called Goldenrod Amarillo Oro. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but we'll try it. Just a little bit of a shade under that eyelid. And I don't even know this is dark enough. I might have to go a little bit darker. But just changing 
the range of that yellow just a little bit will really pop your artwork out. Be sure to get all of those little bits. I even brought Mr. Mustache with me. He's really dirty. <laughs> this is Mr. Mustache. He's what we use at school to dust off our tables to keep them clean. All right. I want to see what else I want to do. I'm almost finished. Oh, I did say I wanted to do some darker green in some places. So I will hit that. There. And here. Blend this a little bit better here. Maybe right there. Down at the bottom there, just a little bit. Make sure you're blending too. You don't want to make it a big scratchy spot. I still feel like we need a little bit more something right in here. my crayon again. My regular crayon. Oh, that kind of looks nice. I keep scratching little nerdlies off. Okay. Um... Pretty happy with it. There's a few places where I might like to blend a little bit, like maybe right here. I don't know what my neighbor's doing. Sort of sounds like the world is ending here. <laughs> Making a lot of noise. Alright. Alright, I think I'm going to call it just about finished here. I could mess with this for hours probably. Let's go ahead and do a little white in the center of the nose for a highlight. And then the last step that I do is I like to go back with this blue color and just hit some of the spots that maybe got run over a little bit. We don't want to make our lines really... Woo! That was crazy. Bigger. We just want, my lamp just fell down. We just want to go back and clean up those lines. So try not to make it any bigger than it was to begin with. But we're just going to clean up those lines. And then we're going to fill our eyes in and be done. I hope you've really enjoyed this. I sure have. I don't know, I think that light's a little close. This is going to give me a sunburn. <laughs> I 
I don't know. Maybe I'm too fussy. I love the Arcat. I love the way it looks. And I actually kind of like this black eye there. Um, and my other pictures, I've put colors in the eyes like Paul Klee did. But I think on this one, I'm going to leave him with just a big black center. And I'll maybe intensify this color here. That ah, broke another crayon. I am, I think I'm on my fourth broken crayon today. Okay. That is our picture, my friends. I hope you have enjoyed this time. I have sure enjoyed it. And don't forget to sign your name down here at the bottom when you finish. I'm going to put my initials, which is A.D. for Abby D. Berry. You put your initials. And your assignment now is to go and take this and put it up someplace in your house on your refrigerator. Show it to everybody in your family. I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you have enjoyed coloring with me and that you've learned something and that you're doing really well in all your schoolwork. So have a great day and I'll see you later.